Hello, how you doing? It's Friday, it's 8 p.m. We're live. So, if you can hear me, if you can see me, give me a like, say hello. Give it a few minutes for people to join. Um, hello on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Turns out if you're watching me via LinkedIn, you can't comment. That's a good idea, isn't it? Um, but if you're watching me via YouTube or Facebook, say hello. And uh, I'm in pain today. Hi, Lewis. How you doing? Oh, I remember it's you this week. I'm in pain. I, <laughs> I know I let my fitness go down the drain a little bit um, over the past year. Didn't think I'd let it go that bad. Um, and I took up, well, I downloaded an app for, um, bear with me, calisthetic, cali, calisthetic, body weight exercises, basically, and, um, started then Wednesday, and I've had doms for the past two days. In my back, in my legs, in my abs, in my shoulders. At what point in evolution did nature think when we do something strenuous, do we then have to have days of pain after? What what good is it? If you know, drop it in the comments because I'd like to know. Hi Sally, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, Lewis, apart from my pain. Literally, I can't bend down to... I, mean, I tried to put the turn the oven plug on earlier and I didn't think I was getting back up. And plugging my laptop into the plug on the floor there. And again, no, it hurts. And another uncomfortable thing I experience this week it's my annual eye test because i'm diabetic i have to go once a year to have my eyes photographed and they have to put those eye drops in that make your eyes blow up i hate eye drops i hate anything by my eyes it's not even in the eyes it's just by them and my as soon as somebody like goes to put their hands there my face will clench up and that's it you've got no chance of doing that but the the guy was pretty decent at his job and he had me head tipped back and he dropped them in. I sort of blinked at him. Acid. If ever you've had them eye drops, it's acid. That's what it is. You burns your eyes out. Anyway, all seems to be all right there. I'm not losing my eyesight to diabetes. Thank you very much. And the rest of the uh, things I had done, blood tests and feet tests and sensitivity tests and all that other joint I need to do all come out fine. So today's live, that's enough about me moaning. Today's live, I want to focus on hypnosis because we've had, this is the seventh live, no, seventh week I'm doing these. Come quick. Seven weeks. Um, I'll be focusing more on the mental health side and things like that. But today I want to focus on the hypnosis side. What is hypnosis? What isn't hypnosis? Um, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments and I shall do my best to answer them. Let me just do some technical stuff. Because as you know, I cannot multitask. Okay, okay, everything seems to be all good. So, hypnosis is one of those things that people, there's a big misconception about it. Not only from people who have never experienced it before, but there's a huge one in the world of hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Because unfortunately, people don't move on with the times. No, I'm not saying that 
I'm a hundred percent correct on my description of hypnosis. I don't think anybody is. But I know it's not. There are many people out there who do hypnosis in different ways. And all hypnosis is really is imagination, focus and concentration. When we have those three things, those three things together, sorry that when you're drunk, we have hypnosis. And it's got nothing to do with trance or any of that business. And it's certainly got nothing to do with being read a nice story for an hour, uh, which we'll get on to in a bit. It is about getting that really deep level of focus. Something that you haven't been able to do on your own. Um, and so when we've got that, we can achieve great things. We can also achieve stupid things. Like, if you want to have a bit of fun. I think someone's mowing the lawn in the dark. Anyway, and best of luck to you. And um, all on about already. Try some seven minutes in, and I've lost me train of thought already. Um, yeah. So, thank you, Angel. What hypnosis is? I don't know. But yeah, hypnosis is just. The pure state of focus, imagination, and concentration. So we've got this really deep sense of focus, concentration. Something that you've probably not been able to do on your own, or have you? It's a lot easier to carry on thinking about the negative things. Um, well, that's what we do. Our brain's programmed to do it, to look at everything, to the danger in it, to the negative in it, worry about it so on and so on which is great when we lived as world animals as tribes people um that sort of thing and we needed that um we needed to have those high levels of anxiety and those levels of depression just to survive because if we didn't do anything which is what we do today we just do the same things over and over again which i've mentioned many times in my other lives so while we've got this deep focus on everything going wrong while we've got this deep focus on all the bad things while we've got this deep thought focus on our shitty jobs on we've got no money, we're in a shitty relationship, whatever it may be, family members are being arseholes, so on and so forth, we focus on that. And we do it with such deep concentration and focus that it becomes our belief system, it becomes our whole everything. Which is hypnosis. And... Again, one of the uh, talking points in the hypnotherapy world is is uh, all hypnosis, self-hypnosis. Don't know. Maybe it is. We go into shops, into stores, and we just go in for, you know, loaf of bread, pint of milk, whatever it might be, and we end up spending a fortune because people have put things we want right there at the front and we go past it and our brain that little voice there goes oh i like that i love that oh i like that i love that i love that and i love that by the time we've got to the milk and the bread we've filled our basket up with utter shite in fact we probably don't even notice until we've got to the checkout and bread and milk has cost us 50 quid i do that regular let's have a look here can people who have terrible concentration have hypnotherapy? Yeah. 
when I work with anybody, whether it be hypnotherapy or we've met at a party and you're bearing out on my hypnotist so you want to have a go, everyone can go into hypnosis. 50% of people can go in easier, easy. The other 50% just need a bit of time. I work with people as an individual. So depending on what your concentration levels are or how your mind works, that's what I have to adapt what I do to help. During this live, while you're watching this live, you will go into some sort of hypnosis because your brain will be converting things that I say into images in your head that um, appeal to you, that mean something to you. And that's basically what happens when you're in hypnosis. When we're doing it to help with, say, depression, anxiety, PTSD, that sort of thing, we can um there's always one question we'll come to that one in a moment um we done it again look pattern interrupt we'll jump there right there we go pattern interrupt is one for you to do with the kids when they're having a go and they on full pelt mode right just calmly turn around to them and go you smell popcorn and shut up that is a pattern interrupt that's what i do with my clients or is your feet hot or cold something like that it gets people out of that emotional mind and the subconscious unconscious patterns of talking or shouting or arguing so on and so forth and it makes them go into their rational way of thinking and they have to think about their feet or think about what they can smell and therefore it's a pattern interrupt. It stops what they were doing. How do I hypnotise someone to give me money? I was at a show the other week with uh, a friend of mine. Um, he was doing a stage show and I went to see him live. And... There's a fellow at the bar who I think wanted a go, but he was doing the usual fear responses and he was trying to play down. Anyway, he was on about, well, you know, if you could do this and make people do these things on stage, why wouldn't you hypnotize give your money you know, in the bank, that sort of thing? Well, I can hypnotize anybody who wants to be hypnotized. Well, I can't hypnotize the CCTV cameras. And I have... I had a mess about with um, when I've gone to, got, ooh, gone to get my hair cut, that sort of thing, and the hairdresser at the time wanted to have a try. So I put her into hypnosis and told her I'd paid for my hair cut, and I walked out. And I stood around the corner so I could see in, and I could see her face working it out. Hi, James. How are you doing? And um, I went back in then and took it all away and said, and she, yeah, sort of funny side of it and whatever else, paid for my haircut and jobs are good. And there is a theories, um, I think it was on the telly many years ago, but it's on YouTube. Um, let me get the right one. Freddie Jacqueline. No. What's this song called? James, what's Freddie Jacqueline's son called? Anyway, it was him. It'll come to me in a minute. And, um, yeah, he goes around London. He's got nothing. He has to get everything through hypnosis, and that's what he does. It's quite entertaining to watch. He's doing my head in now. I can't think. I can picture the, what is his name? No, it'll come to me. And, um But yeah, anybody can be, be hypnotised and you can get people to do things they don't want. You can't get people to do things they don't want to do. You can get people to do things they think they wouldn't do or you can get people to do things that they want to do. 
um again not really tested it to the extremes of where you could go with it to sort of break the law and i've got no intention to because i ain't gonna get away with it am i um i imagine if i was to hypnotize an ex-bank robber or something but they'd do it because they've done it before and they know what they're doing and it's in their mind to do it you see when i work with people i get them to go back to that time when they were most happiest most um confident when they feel the best when they felt the best that they, they were before the stress before the all the crap in their life because they felt it it's easy to bring that back and it's easy then to build on it let's have a look another question chris how can hypnosis help with anxiety and stress so great question thank you james so stress is pretty much everything our work stress relationship stress money stress when we look at our bank account we've overspent that stress when um we've had an argument that's stress even when we learn new things it's stressful we put ourselves constantly daily every moment of day under stress i don't want you to imagine you've got a bucket in your head and all that stress of life goes in that bucket and eventually it's going to overflow that's when we become burn, burnt out symptoms of that are depression and anxiety Depression and anxiety are telling you that changes need to be made in your life. And if you choose to ignore it, you'll carry on with depression and anxiety. And it will get worse and worse and worse until eventually your brain will say, you know what, fuck you, have this, boom. And it will stop you. I was stopped. I was nearly stopped for good. I've worked with many clients who are suicidal. I've worked with many clients who just can't see a future. But they have got a future. What hypnosis can do there is generate those images for them to work out how to get there. Not only that, but the images in our mind is like having a dream. And that's when we go to sleep and we dream, that's when we process stuff. But when our stress book is full, we can't process enough. And the thing is, when we go to sleep, it uses a lot of energy. So that's if you find yourself waking up at three, four o'clock in the morning, you're struggling to sleep, that sort of thing. It's because of that. It's because your brain, you haven't got the energy to do what it needs to do, but you also need to sleep because it needs to process. And now you're in that nasty cycle with hypnosis we can sort of bypass parts of it and focus on and pinpoint certain bits now these images can be absolutely anything and everything from um, you know it could just be colors it could be uh, fog it could be i've even had and i mentioned in a previous uh, live a client who got rid of their issues by they imagined themselves in medieval England and they were chucking their shit into um, the river. And there's not any other therapy on the planet that can generate that. And I strongly believe talking about your problems doesn't help in the slightest. Because words are for other people. Words are for other people and not for us. You can tell people that you're depressed, that you're anxious, so on and so on. And for the main part, it's not other people's issue. It's your issue. It's your anxiety. It's your depression. It's your burnout. The stresses are in your life. So we need to deal with them. Sometimes you don't know what they are. Sometimes you do. You just don't want to admit it or face up to it. 
I knew mine from the outset was my job. And I had PTSD from when my dad died. And it was those images. So on about the images, and again, mentioned it plenty of times before, but the image I had that ended my PTSD was because I had all the guilt and the shame and the anger and the pain of not helping my dad die when he was suffering. And I sat there, and I'm not a spiritual person. I don't believe in ghosts, spirits, anything like that. I knew it was my imagination. I knew I was in the hypnotist therapy room. I knew I was in his chair. But in my mind, I was sat outside my dad's favourite bar in Spain with my dad. Drink on table. I could feel the breeze on my face. I could smell the the sea and the other smells around. I could smell the food from the restaurant. It was that intense. And my dad sat next to me and told me to let it go. There's nothing that can be done now. Just let it go. And it did. When I help people with grief, it's the same thing. Sometimes people just want to say goodbye. Some people have questions they want answering. Whatever the person's belief system is, whether they believe in spirits, ghosts, whatever else, that's up to them. What I can do is use hypnosis to put them in to that place in their mind where they can ask those questions. And how does that work? Because the brain can't tell the difference between thought and reality. So as far as my brain's concerned, I was sat there in that bar talking to my dad, and my dad said, let it go. I've had clients who have been that stricken with grief that they can't leave the house because the person's dies suddenly and they want to ask why. So if they want to, I put them in that position where they can talk to the person who died and ask them the questions and get the answers. And I know how that may sound to people, but it's not like a, I don't do it like a, a medium thing or, you know, because again, that's not my cup of tea. To me, is using those images to let go and it is based on the fact of the brain can't tell the difference between thought and reality. Same as when I get people who are struggling with social anxiety. Maybe they've got an event, public speaking, something like that. And the thought of getting up there on stage, talking to others, so on and so on, and they're shitting themselves. I help them with the images to get them on that stage. Again, each time they think about doing it, and we can reprogram the responses, each time they think of doing it, they are doing it as far as the brain is concerned. So after a few attempts, after a bit of reprogramming with responses, up they get on stage, whatever it may be, walk into the bar, um, and everything's fine. Because that's what anxiety is. It's a learned behaviour. Your responses to things that cause anxiety is a learned behaviour. How can you use hypnosis in an argument? Um, I wouldn't know. Pattern interrupts are good. Um, ideally, and it would be good, but I've never got it to work. Just do um, a shock induction and just say the argument's over and I've won. That would be the best and possible outcome, I guess. Yeah, for what I'm saying, the girlfriend will be watching this. And, um, yeah. Um, yeah, pattern interrupts happens quite a lot in these bloody lives because 
things happen and comments come up and it throws me right off. And that's what that is. It's, I mean, I've said that these things in my videos, in talks, so on and so on. So I just talk about it, talk about my story, talk about the, the facts, talk about whatever. And then when something pops up, it throws me off. Not an interrupt. Again, these can be generated with the usual. What's your phone number backwards? It gets people to think. What's your postcode backwards? It gets people to think. Can you smell popcorn? Is your feet are your feet hot or cold? It's just about getting out that emotional part of the brain into the rational, logical one. So, I know we're only having a laugh here, but there's a lot of things about winning arguments. The one thing I struggle with is getting things from both sides. And always I've done, and it's something I'm working on um, to better myself with. Because I don't think you can ever win an argument. If you prove something wrong, what you, know, you prove someone wrong, what have you proved? All you have done is you know stop that person's down, you know, down and they don't respect you, they don't have um they don't like you and stuff like that. So you're not won anything really. Look for a solution rather than argue. You got a problem? Look for a solution. Again, easier said than done when uh, at, at the time, because it's human natural behavior to go on defensive when we are um, basically attacked verbally. Someone says you're wrong. In fact, even so, the brain is set up to reject anything, really. And I could give you the best uh, advice down to bad. Could change your life like that. And your brain would reject it. Until it's had a conversation with itself. And you've gone away. And you, um, it's generated images. It's had a word with itself. And uh, you come at it with a different perspective. Do you still do your hand life? Uh, sometimes. I, I did restart the Hypno Hub thing, but it didn't really take again. And um, I'm doing these lives. I would like, if anyone is interested, um, maybe once a month or something, offer a session for people who are willing to come on live so I can showcase what I do. Um, and yeah, I'll have a, a chat beforehand so you know what's going to happen, you know, what's and that sort of thing. Um, but I'm Sam Carl, I shall drop you a message. And we shall have a chat. Uh, but yeah, so if you want some help with something and you're willing to come on live and um, we will do it from scratch, I will explain to you how I work so you understand that. I'm not going to have you pouring out everything on, on, on a live unless you want to. Um, as I say, I don't believe talking works. So therefore... You don't need to talk. You don't need to tell us what the problem is, anything, so on and so forth. What is your most frequently asked question from people who are new to hypnosis? There's... No, I think there's one. There's the usual. Uh, can I get stuck in hypnosis? No. Um... 
would be good if you could. Uh, that'd be nice, pleasant life. Um, can I make you do things you don't want to do? No, I can't even make you go into hypnosis. Hypnosis is a voluntary thing. You have to want to go into it. Expect it to happen, want it to happen, it will happen. If you resist me, I won't pause it. And there's a difference between resistance and resistance. Um, when I deal with people with anxiety and I'm you know, new to them, whether it be online or I've shown up at the house. Some sessions, per sessions, we don't even do hypnosis if their level's that high that they can't, you know, let me do what I need to do. Because the brain just won't do it. It's on high alert. It's, you know, making sure I'm not a threat. So we just have a chat and we get over that barrier. Next session we come along and it's a different story. Um, but if someone's resisting in the way of, you know, oh, you won't put me into hypnosis, okay, then I won't. Simple as that. Cheers, James. Have a great weekend yourself. Take care now. Um, yeah. What hypnosis isn't? Hypnosis isn't sleep and it's not relaxation. You will be relaxed because I will give you the suggestion that you're relaxed. But if you are paying for hypnotherapy sessions and somebody is reading you a story, by that I mean script based, ask for your money back and go and find someone that can do a proper job. Again, not the therapist's fault. There's a lot of shit trainers out there who are failed hypnotherapists who can't hypnotize anybody and they set up courses to train people. And I unfortunately, in the beginning, was one that fell for the marketing of one of those. Don't regret doing it because I did learn certain things, not about hypnosis or hypnotherapy, but other things about how the brain works, that sort of thing. And then I was lucky enough to find an actual hypnotist who I learned from. There is a lot of crap out there, unfortunately. Um, do be careful. And that has a knock-on effect for everybody else. I mean, I've seen clients who have been to, I mean, how many number one hypnotherapists there are in the UK is beyond me. Obviously, nobody actually hands these awards out. It's just self-proclaimed. It does my head in. So I'm going to call myself the universe's number one hypnotherapist. There we go. I'm going to do, do one better than everybody else. So it, it does my head in. You know, I want my clients to tell people what I can do. I don't want to write on my website. I'm the most sought after hypnotherapist and all that bollocks. And I've seen clients that have been to these people. And obviously these poor people have wasted a lot of money and not got a result. And I'm results driven. I like to get results. Sometimes the result we get isn't the one you originally think you want. Uh, for instance, I'm working with a client um, and she originally came to me because she wanted a promotion at work. Turns out she doesn't even want the job. Wants to do something completely different. But at the moment, her life, she's not at that point in her life where she can do that. So we've reframed what she thinks of the job and it's now funding her for the life that she wants when she can in the next year or so and then we do goal setting with things like that again absolutely pointless thinking about the end goal and sticking with that if you want to lose weight don't and you're you know 20 stone say and you want to get down to 15 stone don't sit there picturing yourself every day as that 15 stone person 
because your brain will think you're already there. Now it will be like, well, okay, we've got that, so I don't need to think of anything else. You need to think of the steps down there. And when we work together, that's what we do. It's called reverse engineering. So we have that main goal, and then we come back step, 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 step. So, you know, let's say, for instance, that one, someone's 20 stone. I want to get down to 15 stone. Okay. We come right back down. First step might be booking an exercise class. I'll tell you what not to do. Download an app of bodyweight exercises, do them in your garden, and then be in pain for the next week. <laughs> Um, mm, don't do that. I need to get back on my health and fitness. There he goes again. Um, yeah, so and again. You get a lot of people as well who have their defence mechanisms with new things. Laughing is a common one. Trying to put someone into hypnosis and they keep laughing. Again, that's not resistance. That's their brain trying to protect them from something. Because, again, if we are going to have a laugh and do things, you don't want to be embarrassed. And I don't want to embarrass you. But your brain doesn't know that. Um, some people do want to be embarrassed. Some people take suggestions a bit too far. And again, as a hypnotist, they have to limit certain things. They put limits on what we can do. Sometimes it is the subject that should be limited. Um, but you can use people's brains to achieve amazing things. Because you're using your brain to stop you from doing amazing things. So let's change that around. Let's get you being the best version of you so you can do the things you want to do. Um, so, for instance, about the whole goal setting and the future thinking. Right. Let's say you've got something big coming up, driving test, whatever it may be, and you're obviously anxious about it. But there's a fine line between anxiety and excitement. I want you to embrace it, first of all. Being anxious keeps you sharp, keeps you alive. When that voice has got to the point it's stopping you from doing things, that's that needs turning down, that needs reprogramming and sorting out. However, we have to think of what could go wrong, but then we have to think of what we're going to do when it does. So if there's something in your that's coming up and you're worried about it. I remember when I was doing my driving test, we've got a set of um, uh, islands around here called Orbital Island. And I think, if I remember rightly, it was quite newly built when I was learning to drive. And it's a bloody nightmare. And it's a bad now because it's got traffic lights on and whatever else. But before, it was pretty much a close your eyes, out for the best, and put your foot down. If you're going to go, go. Kind of roundabout. And I was stuck out my I didn't want to go around it, didn't want to go around it, so on and so forth. And ended up going around it and I did it all fine. No problem. Because the things that we worry about usually never is a problem hang on oh the hell i got 40 minutes in this week 40 minutes nearly without having to pause the microphone and um yeah so what i want you to do is i want you to think about doing your test doing each bit and succeeding it not getting the end product the end goal, you've got that in mind. You know where you're going, what you got to do to get there. So let's take that, for instance, going around those roundabouts, picturing myself in the right lanes. 
which I very really rarely do these days. Picture himself in the right lanes, picturing hands in the right position, going over, staying in the right lanes, and doing whatever it is I needed to do. Job done. My brain's done it. I've been around those roundabouts. I've achieved it. I can do it again. But I don't know what my instructor gave me. It was some weird drops, right? And before my test, he gave me these drops. And I remember sitting in the exam place. And there was a, a woman, a young woman, who was also waiting to do her test. And literally, she must have gone to the toilet about 10,000 times. And I was just sat there, bulletproof. Like, yeah. I was just... And the lesson I had before, if you could make a mistake, I made it. I remember doing the parallel parking and I brought the car back and ended up sort of, I don't even know how I managed it. Even my instructor didn't know how I managed it. You wouldn't have even thought I was going for my test that day. I made that many cock-ups. Didn't bother me. Shake it off, next bit. We can only ever learn from our mistakes. Uh, da, da, da. What's that? Um, yeah, so that I can't think of anything else really. Anybody else got any questions? You leave a lot as well in the Hypnotherapy thing of the subconscious mind. Is there a subconscious mind? I don't think so. I prefer to say the rational and emotional brains because that's what it is. You've got your rational thinking brain that problem solves, that, um, you know, takes in information and comes up with solutions, so on and so on. But then you've got your emotional brain that comes up with responses. And your emotional brain will be the one that always wins. So what we've got to do is get those working together. And if we've trained ourselves to have bad responses, for instance, we have a phobia or something, or uh, we've just got this really big anxiety about something, or something really depresses us, that sort of thing, we can change our state of mind, change those responses, and get you doing better things. As I said before, the idea of my program is to collapse that tower of shit responses. So you've got a clean foundation. And we put some good ones in, some better ones, some healthier ones. And that could be a array, array of things. So, for instance, if it's a phobia removal, you look at X and Y used to happen. Now you look at X and you know, Y is now a better response. As these things occur in your life now, these new patterns build and build, and they just become routine. Uh, same goes with people who smoke or vape, and I want to give up. It's nothing to do with the smoking or the vaping. It's a coping mechanism, usually because people will smoke or vape when they're stressed, because it calms them down. Now the breathing calms you down because you have to breathe a certain way for the smoking and the vaping to work. But you can do that without breathing in whatever it is that you're breathing in. Much healthier response. People drink too much. Why? Because it relaxes them. It helps them sleep. No, it doesn't. You've just told yourself it does and now it's become a belief system. But you can do the same thing with water. Some people are more suggestible than others. And sometimes some suggestions don't work. Sometimes you have to find a way to make it work. For instance, that show that I saw a mate do. Um, there was a fella on stage. He was brilliant. All show, like, brilliant subject. Doing all the skits. Really animated hilarious brilliant fella 
at the end he did a uh they're on britain's got talent and it's they've all got a dance and whoever's the best dancer wins that sort of thing and he wasn't doing it there's not a hypnotist on this planet that could make me do a skit that involves singing because i don't um i don't sing in public i can't sing so i don't do it wish i could um but unfortunately i can't um he wasn't dancing until the hypnotist mentioned that the winner of the competition gets a money prize and he soon got off his chair and not only was he dancing but you would have literally thought he was dancing to save his life absolutely brilliant hilarious to watch great uh great for the show and um and yeah great entertainment and that's what you want in the show and uh and again at the end you take all those suggestions away person's back to normal but as a, a good hypnotist you always leave something good in there so you, you know you tell them you know, great night's sleep and they're gonna be full of confidence that sort of thing because you give these suggestions to people and they see that version of them in their mind and they become it uh, working with sports people they've had an injury or they just had a run of bad luck and it's playing on their mind they can't make that shot because though they can't score or they can't race or whatever and then all they're visualizing is this failure golfer thinking about the ball going miles in the wrong direction well, you're telling yourself well, that's what you want to do so we generate the images and the responses and the uh, physical and psychological changes for them to go out there and play the game whatever the sport may be at their best and they're the same with business owners because it is easy when you're a business owner to lose that spark lose that passion especially when you get you know surrounded by the bits that you never really wanted to do when you took up your business because let's face it we start a business for one thing we have something we're passionate in we don't want to work a job and earn people lots of money we want to earn lots of money and um yeah we let those images of the stress and the failures and the i want to get on top of us but that can be changed around that can be swapped around you can see clearer make the changes for big, big changes or small changes and again it's a choice for people i can never make them do something if you know i work with a client and and they realize they're in you know an unhealthy relationship they need to get out um the job's killing them the business isn't what they want it to be because the team around them isn't what they want it to be well they have to make the right choices then they have to make the choice to either get off their arse and sort it or stay where you are and if you don't make a change it doesn't matter how much motivation or whatever i give you if you're not going to make the change the headache is going to stay the same it's always going to be there it's always going to come back a lot of hypnotists hypnotherapists fail because we get lied to when we're training why do we get lied to when we're training because the person that's training us probably never seen a client in their life apart from friends and family and we get told that if you just sit there, maybe, you know, just mention now and again on Facebook or whatever that you do this and whatever else, that people will come flocking to you. They don't. It's bloody hard work. 80% of my business is doing this, being online, being on social media marketing 
not what I started the business for. I wanted to help people. I wanted to get people out of PTSD and out of burnout so, so, so they didn't feel how I felt once upon a time. Took me quite a while to change my thinking of these tasks. So now I enjoy it. I enjoy doing these lives. Even though I'm sitting here right now and my back is in screaming agony. Because <laughs> I've got the world's worst chair to sit on. I still enjoy doing it. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy giving help and advice. Again, whether you want to take it on board or not, that's entirely up to you. Um, we will have a choice. We have a choice to make something of ourselves. We have a choice to do what we want to do. We also have a choice to sit on our asses and suffer. Everything is a choice. Big thing that I do for my clients is get them to realise that. When they realise that, they take um, control of what they do in their lives how they eat, how they drink, smoke, don't smoke. If they take drugs, stop it if they want to. Again, I'll never do change something for somebody if they don't want to do it. Even if I think it's you know a better thing for them and they'll be healthier for it, it doesn't work like that. It's not my place to do that. Hi, Chris, how are you doing? Cheers, mate. And, uh, doing great. On here every week. Waffling on. Um, well, all in all, hypnosis is absolutely nothing to worry about. If you're thinking about going for hypnosis and you obviously want to Chat with me. Hang on. Let me put my details up on the bottom. There we go. Just go on my website. Drop me a message. In a consultation. We'll have a chat. But yeah, hypnosis is nothing to be scared about. Um, you know, just because you granddad's best mate's cousin in Benny Dorm in 1974 was made to eat an onion and he thought it was an apple yeah that can happen but not in not unless you want it to um again a lot of my clients do want to have a a play about and experience the fun side of it and I do that puts a smile on the face gives them a laugh that's what we're here for. It's also a good convincer as well about, you know, to show the power that you've got to help people. When you do those things, sticking their eyes down, um, sticking a hand to the table, sticking them to a chair, whatever it may be, it's powerful because they can't explain it. It's a demonstration, and a demonstration, um, you know, picture paints a thousand words, as I say. Uh, if I can get people who are willing to come on live, um, you know, if you want help with with something, and, and you're willing to come on live and experience this, let's drop me a message. Let's have a chat. We'll get something sorted out. Works just as well online as it does in person. Um, so we can just do this on a split screen and all we need is a good internet connection and obviously a camera and for you and uh, whatever you're using to be stable. And we can do it. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Make sure you question the therapist that you want to work with. I know where it is that when you're in that frame of mind, you either just want help or you're past caring, 
try to move that to one side. If you connect with that therapist, you're going to do well. If you don't, there's going to be a problem. Um, I will never take money off somebody who I don't believe I can help. And I would rather pass the person on to somebody who I think will if they don't like my approach. My approach is very much like a, a sledgehammer. It's no nonsense, no bullshit. Let's get sorted. Because I want you to stop wasting time because that's what I've been doing. Wasting time. And time is one thing that you'll never, ever get back. I saw a thing a few weeks ago. Uh, it's very, very true. The only person in 20 years that will remember how hard you worked is your kids. And that's the truth. Because what you think you might be doing now, working yourself to death, quite literally, working yourself to death. They will remember. Mum was never there. Dad was never there. I don't have the memories of of things because was it working or too tired to do anything. And we do that in pursuit of money. Again, been there myself. I haven't got kids myself, but when I was a driver, Risked my life many a time. Driving stupid hours, stupid miles for what? For this image I had that in 10 years' time I was going to be, you know, have lorries and be this big hauler company and all that crap. And look what I'm doing now. <laughs> I absolutely love what I do now. A million times more than I ever did driving. If you're feeling burnt out, if you're feeling anxiety is getting the better of you, that life's not worth living, that you can't cope anymore, I just want you to realise that you can. And with the right help and the right guidance, you can turn your life around and make it whatever you want it to be. And I know you can do it. Because I can do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. And I have the pleasure of taking that journey with many, many people. I work with people all over the English-speaking world. And it's great to see when you get from one, you know, when they get in contact with me for the consultation to the end of the program. That change in people, it's amazing. And I'll never, ever tire of seeing that. So I'm about to wrap up tonight. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for giving up your most important thing, which is time, to join me. Much appreciated. If you could uh, give my channel a like and subscribe. If you could like this video, whether you're on LinkedIn, Facebook or YouTube. And I shall see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye.